This is Evangelist Henry Walker. Thank you for tuning into our podcast. Or maybe you're listening to me on my website at henrywalker.org under audio messages. Or maybe you're listening to me on my YouTube channel. I want to start a new message today talking about positioning, how the Father wants to position us in the right place at the right time to serve Him, but also to be blessed by Him. Well, let's go to Father in prayer first. Father, I thank you for another opportunity to minister to your people, Father. I ask you to use me just the way you want, Father. Let me say only what you want me to say, nothing more and nothing less. Help people, Father, to open up their spirits and not only receive the word, but study the word for themselves. And we give you all the praise and the honor, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. Satan, I rebuke you from this podcast, every succeeding podcast, and anybody listening out there, Go right now and don't return in the name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. So again, we want to talk about the Father positioning us at the right place at the right time. Go to the Gospel of Luke with me, chapter 1, right after Mark, before John. We studied about coming out of the wilderness, and He always shows up for us, and He's put us in a new level of promotion. And now we're still learning how to operate on this level. And today... We want to talk again about him positioning us at the right place at the right time. So he can use us to be a blessing to other people, but also bless us at the right time. We're going to walk into many, many miracles just by serving him, surrendering everything to him. As I mentioned on every podcast, turning that flesh over to the Father so he can mortify the deeds of our flesh, make us more like Yeshua, and bring the fruit of the Spirit out of our lives. That's Romans 8, verse 13, 29, and Galatians 5, verse 22 to 26. And when you do, you come under his complete protection. We abide in the secret place of the Most High. So many people think they can just quote Psalm 91 and say, I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. No, you have to surrender everything to him. And we, again, we come under his complete protection. Not only does he use us in tremendous ways, but he blesses us in tremendous ways. So Luke chapter 1. Verse 5, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. He was a priest, and each priest had to serve in the temple at certain times of the year. They all had individual courses to fulfill. In verse 7, Elizabeth and Zechariah, they had no child because Elizabeth was barren. They both were now well stricken in years. Now he was in the temple doing his course. In verse 11, And he appeared unto him, and the angel of Yahweh standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fearful upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and shall call his name John. That's very important. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Verse 16, and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to Yahweh their Elohim. As Zechariah doubted, in verse 20, You shall be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed. Because thou believe not my words, which shall be filled in their season, the angel said. In verse 24, So Zechariah was positioned at the right place at the right time. The Father maneuvered him to be there in that course that he had to serve in the temple. Verse 24, And after those days his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months. That's very, very important. The only ones that knew that she had conceived were Elizabeth and Zechariah. Verse 26, And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from the Father unto the city of Galilee named Nazareth to Mary. Verse 28, And the angel came into her and said, How? Thou art highly favored. Yahweh is with you. Blessed art thou among women, not above women, among women. Verse 31, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Yahshua. Remember, the angel is appearing to a Hebrew lady, and so the baby's name is Yahshua. Remember, Yeshua said in John 17, Father, I have manifested your name, the name which you have given me. See, Yahshua comes from Yahweh, Y-A-H is the family name. Yahshua means Yahweh, our Savior. And 
as I mentioned, there's thousands of people that are named Jesus, Jesus, good people. But the Father has given him a name, Yahshua, that's hiding any other name. Nobody has that name, but so many people have the name of Jesus. It's, it's Greek. And on my website at henryworker.org, I have a message about the truth. You can see the, where the name Jesus came from, but his name is Yahshua. There's so much power when you call upon the name Yahweh and Yahshua as he surrendered everything to the Father. So powerful. I was ministering in Freeport, the Bahamas once, and I was talking about it, and Yahweh, Yeshua, and a pastor that night, he, he told me, he said, when I was in my room praying, I called upon the name of Yahweh, and the room filled up with his presence. So many of you out there, you wonderful people, you're just missing the name of Yahweh, Yeshua, in your life. It's so very important. Yahweh is an action verb. So when you surrender to the Father, he actively moves in your behalf. It's not a noun, it's an action verb. Remember we talked about that the King James people, or the King Germs people, as I call them, instead of translating Yahweh, they translated Yahweh to be Lord, capitalized, L-O-R-D. And remember, Lord comes from Baal, it's the river from Baal, and Baal's above the Lord of the flies. So the enemy wants you to call him Lord, not Yahweh. It's been hidden from believers for 1,700 years. And it's important that you, you pray about what I'm saying. It's so beautiful. He's the I am that I am, and he actively moves on your behalf. Remember when he said to Moses, tell the people that I am that I am. Whatever you need him to be is wrapped up in the name of Yahweh. Whatever he wants to bless you with is wrapped up in the name of Yahweh. And then Mary said to the angel, how can this be? I don't know a man. But he said, the spirit of the Father shall come upon you. In verse 36, And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she had also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who is called barren. See, this is how Mary knew that this angel, Gabriel, was from Yahweh, because nobody knew that Elizabeth was, was pregnant except Elizabeth and Zacharias, as I said. I want to go back to 37. For with the Father, nothing shall be impossible. You need to receive that today. He's going to put you in the right place at the right time to be used by him, but also receive blessings. Those blessings will overtake you. That means if you go in the wrong way, he'll turn you around, put you in the right place, and bless you. The blessings will overtake you. You don't have to seek them. They'll come to you. I claim Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 to 14, over each and every one of your lives. Look it up, all those blessings. You can pour out his good treasure on our lives. Powerful. In verse 38, Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of Yahweh, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste of the city of Judah. She had to get into position to receive the blessing. And she saluted Elizabeth. Verse 41, and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in the womb. Not the tissue, the babe. And Elizabeth was filled with the spirit of the father. And she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, again, not above women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Yeshua should come unto me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe again leaped in my womb for joy. The babe, not a tissue. We believe that life begins at conception. It's so beautiful. We were introduced to the father in our mother's womb. Remember, after 18 weeks, the baby's heart begins to beat. After four months, the baby's heart is pumping 25 quarts of blood per day. Again, it's not a tissue. It's a babe. It's a purpose wrapped up in flesh. It's a life. Now, if you had an abortion out there, repent, go on with the father. But it's important everybody believes that that's a babe, a baby. A purpose wrapped up in the flesh, in his or her mother's womb. In verse 45, And blessed is she that believed, for it shall be a performance of those things which were told her from Yahweh, because she believed. Believe. The Father wants to position you. Maybe it's a place you don't want to go. Maybe he's going to reposition you. Remember that Elijah was hiding in the cave, and the Father sent him back to where Jezebel was. He had to go see Elisha. Elisha was going to follow Elijah now. And he had to anoint Hazelil to be king. He had, still had work to do. He had to be repositioned where Jezebel was. Remember, Jezebel sent her messages to try to put fear into Elijah and did. He ran. 
But the Father visited him and sent him right back there. Don't run away from what the Father wants you to do. You don't want him to give that assignment to somebody else. He always has a ram in the bush. You look at the number two in the word. It always means that not only does the Father go with us, we're not going alone, but also he has a ram in the bush. If you say no, he'll give the assignment to somebody else and the blessings connected to that assignment to somebody else. The world does not revolve around us. The Father's plans do not revolve around us if we're disobedient. He'll just use somebody else. Mary had to be away from where she lived. She had to go to Elizabeth's house. The Spirit of the Father could not overshadow her where she was. She had to be someplace else. She had to be positioned in Elizabeth's house. And here's where that overshadowing happened. In verse 46, back up in 45 as I read, Elizabeth said, Blessed is she that believe, for it shall be. Okay, there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from Yahweh. So it had not happened yet. Now here is when the Spirit of the Father overshadowed her, because she was in the right place at the right time. Sometimes, again, he may want to send you where you don't want to go. Like with Peter in Acts chapter 12, he, did, he sure didn't want to go to prison. But the Father came and set him free. It's such an inspiration to so many people that were praying for him. The Father has a reason for wanting you to go someplace. Even if it's only for one person, because he wants to reach that person. Remember with the parable of the lady who had the hundred sheep? She left the ninety-nine went after the one. It's so very important. That person is important to him. When you go to that person and allow him to use you, you know he's going to bless you, but it's just the idea that we serve him. And realize that one person is so important to him. So many people want to preach to thousands of people. But the Father judges on how we, we minister to one person. He, he's given the unique ability to concentrate on one person. And nothing else matters except what he wants to do with that one person. When I have services, he has me call people out. It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. It's that one person. I allow him to minister through me to that person. Like that person is the only person in the world. In verse 46, And Mary said, My soul does magnify Yahweh. So here the, the Spirit of the Father is overshadowing her mind, will, and her emotions, her soul. And my spirit had rejoiced, and the Father, my Savior. She needed a Savior. Later on in the book of Acts, you see that she was in the temple on the day of Pentecost, to receive the Spirit of the Father inside of her. She, plus her sons, Yeshua's brothers, showed up, but not the sisters. But she had to be there. Remember, she's not the mother of the Father. She's the mother of Yeshua. Some people want to lift her up higher than she ever wanted to be. But she served the Father by allowing the Father to position her in the right place. Again, verse 47, My spirit had rejoiced in the Father, my Savior. So now... The Spirit of the Father is overshadowing her spirit. For he had regarded the low state of his handmaiden, but behold, from henceforth all nations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty had done to me great things, and precious is his name. See, Elizabeth said there shall be a performance, and here in verse 46 to 47, it happened. She had to be positioned in the right place. Now in verse 57, Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered, she brought forth a son. And they asked her, what shall the baby's name be? And she said, John. And they went to Zechariah, and he wrote on a piece of paper, his name shall be John. And then he, his mouth was opened and his tongue loose, and he spoke in verse 64. And he praised the Father, and he prophesied. Verse 67, and his father Zacharias was filled with the Spirit of the Father and prophesied, saying, Blessed be Yahweh Elohim of Israel, for he had visited and redeemed his people. He's prophesying that the Father is coming on the earth in Yeshua, the Yahweh Elohim. In verse 76, prophesied by John the Baptist, And now, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of Yahweh to prepare his ways. Wow. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. The first thing that John preached was repent. first thing Yeshua preached, repent. first thing he Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, repent. That's the first step to repent. Say, Father, I don't want to do it anymore. I want to serve you. Father, I repent of doing things that are against you and your word. Here I am, Father. I surrender to you. It's so important. In chapter 2, verse 21. Now, when eight days were accomplished for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Yeshua, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. 
Mary and Joseph had to bring Yeshua to the temple to be circumcised. In verse 25, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Spirit of the Father was upon him. It was revealed to him by the Spirit of the Father that he should not see death before he had seen Yahweh's Yeshua. He was in the temple at the right time, at the right place. In verse 40, And the child grew, Yeshua, and waxed strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of the Father was upon him. In verse 41, Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. This is very, very important. If you want to know when Yeshua was born, it's right here. In verse 42, And when he was 12 years old. Now in the Greek it said when he became 12 years old. He was born on Passover. They went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. The custom of the feast, you had Passover and you had seven days on living bread. And the first day on living bread, they had to be in the temple. It was a convocation. They had to be in the temple. So the custom of the feast was that his Passover and he had to go to Jerusalem to be in the temple for the first day of unleavened bread. They went there with Yeshua and he left them and went someplace else. They couldn't find him. But they went back a day's journey. In verse 44, looking among the relatives where he could be. See, so you have Passover and unleavened bread. It's like a day's journey. You have Passover and seven days of unleavened bread. So we just read before that on the eighth day, male babies had to be circumcised. So he fulfilled Passover by being born on Passover, died on Passover. He was circumcised on the last day of unleavened bread. It's so beautiful. He fulfilled every feast day with the exception of the fall feasts, which are coming up. Feast of Trumpets, which is Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, and Tabernacles. Watch very carefully these fall feasts. Watch the end of September. Watch what Father's going to do. He's going to move. He's going to move. He's going to do some tremendous things. Just be ready. And the Feast of Trumpets, he could come back on the Feast of Trumpets. Please be ready. Surrender to the Father. And worship him in spirit and truth. And I have a book on my website, henrywalker.org. Is the Trinity really a mystery? The Trinity is the Father manifesting himself as the Father in the Son, as the Spirit that's making us more like Yeshua. There's only one Spirit, Ephesians 4 4. So he is that Spirit. That's what the Trinity really is. The book is free. Be ready for the rapture. Surrender everything to him. And know he's the only one sitting on the throne. The Father sitting on the throne in Yeshua. Revelation 4, 2, there's only one sitting on that throne. So they went back to Jerusalem to look for Yeshua. In verse 46, And it came to pass, after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. See, the Father positioned him as a man. The Father positioned him in the temple. He had to be in the right place at the right time. He said in verse 49, unto Mary and Joseph. How is it that you sought me? Wish you not that I must be about my father's business? It's so important to be in the right place at the right time. In Luke chapter 4, in verse 1, And Yeshua, being full of the Spirit of the Father, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit of the Father into the wilderness, and he was tempted of the enemy. Verse 14, And yet they resisted Satan and used the word against Satan, and Yeshua returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and it went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. As a man, remember he's the Father manifest in the flesh, he's filled with the Spirit of the Father. When Yeshua came out of the wilderness after being tempted by Satan and resisting Satan and using the word on him, he returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Wow. It's so important that if you're being tempted, you submit to the Father, resist the devil, and he'll flee. And incidentally, remember we talked about if Satan gives you an impure thought or temptation, just imagine, picture in your mind, picture in your spirit, the crown of thorns around Yeshua's head. He arranged for that crown of thorns to be on his head. Remember, the Father produced the whole thing. He controls everything and everybody. So our minds would be protected from Satan. All you have to do is picture that if you're being tempted or fear is trying to come upon you, anxiety. And remember in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5, the weapons of warfare are not carnal but mighty through the Father to pulling down strongholds. 
cast in imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of the Father and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Yeshua. Again, it's like a tennis match. Just give that thought to the Father. It's very important. So he went to the synagogue as his custom was. So many people forget that Yeshua is a Jew, was a Jew, and always will be a Jew. So why aren't more believers keeping the Sabbath as his day? Because Constantine institutes Sunday to replace the Sabbath, a day to worship the sun. Remember, Yeshua's disciples were going to a cornfield. They were picking corn on the Sabbath. Some religious leaders came against him, and he said, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. I'm the Yeshua of the Sabbath. So how can anybody make another day to be the Lord's day? How can anybody say another day is the Sabbath when he instituted the Sabbath way before there was any Jew in Genesis 2, verse 7? It was not just for the Jews, it's for all of us. But so many people are missing that Sabbath day rest from Friday 6 p.m. to Saturday 6 p.m. He wants to draw you during some of that time into his presence with an appointment so he can bless you, refresh you, comfort you, and get you ready for the start of the week, which is on Saturday at 6 p.m. Remember, the day runs from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. are the 12 hours of the day that Yeshua talked about. And 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. are the 12 hours of the night or the night watches. The first watch of the night, the first watch of the night is 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. You need to pray for the day that's starting at that time. Remember, 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. is when the witches want to move. They want to try to put curses on some people. You need to pray against that. Father wakes you up during that time. Pray against that. For Some people might be the object of some witchcraft. Pray. And you, you can cover that prayer between 6 and 9 p.m. too, before the 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. watch starts. And 3 a.m. To, to 6 a.m. is the fourth watch of the night when Yeshua walked on the water. Some people could be going through some deep, dark attacks during the time. It may wake you up to pray for people. It's important. So, again, talking about the Sabbath, is written with the finger of the Father, the fourth commandment. In Acts chapter 13, Paul preached to the Jews in the synagogue on the Sabbath, and the Gentiles said, the next Sabbath preached to us, and the whole city came out on the Sabbath to hear that word, the Sabbath. Isaiah 66, verse 23, Isaiah said, in the time of the millennium, that thousand-year period of time in Jerusalem, where we'll be with Yeshua, Isaiah said, from one Sabbath to another Sabbath, all nations will come to worship the King, Yeshua, in Jerusalem. Sabbath is real. Don't let the enemy pull you away from the Sabbath, just because it sounds so Jewish. But like I said, Yeshua is a Jew, was a Jew, always will be a Jew. Constantine tried to take everything that was Jewish away from what the believers taught, what Yeshua taught to the believers and what the believers taught to other people. And he succeeded in such a large extent, 1,700 years. He tried to establish Sunday as the day to worship the sun. This is all on my website, henrywalker.org, under the truth. You have to make sure that there's nothing in your walk with Yeshua that has pagan origins involved, pagan traditions. They're interfering with your relationship with the Father. As I mentioned, we see that Yeshua was born on Passover, died on Passover. Why would people want to celebrate December 25th as the birth of Yeshua? When it's the birth of the sun god, Mitra. So indirectly, people are actually believing that Yeshua is that sun god. Indirectly, I have to be very, very careful. We have to please the Father. The only way to please the Father is to get anything that's not in the Word out of our walk with Him. And yet Easter, so many people believe Yeshua rose from the dead on Easter Sunday. Easter is about a goddess, Astar, who was resurrected out of a, an Easter egg. It all this is pagan in origin. You have to get that junk out of your life. Get that junk out of your house. And Valentine's Day is all about a, a demon named Cupid who wants to give some people a heart attack. And people are given this heart candy. He's pictured as a shooting an arrow into a heart. Now you know where that came from. But so many beautiful people are giving a heart candy to somebody they love. They don't know what they're doing. So many assemblies have Valentine's Day dinners for couples. It's sad. They had the Easter egg hunts for Easter. It's terrible. And 
my opinion, I'm not saying it's from Yahweh, it's very, very difficult for anybody to go into rapture, hold on to those holidays, and hold on to the three persons doctrine. I mean, that doesn't bring any praise and honor to the Father by saying he's one out of three. And the terms God, the Son, and God, the Holy Ghost, they're nowhere in the word at all. But the King James people put certain scriptures in there that try to promote that doctrine when it's heresy. And it's all contained in my book, Is the Trinity Really a Mystery? There's another book on it called Noon, it talks about the feast days. See, the enemy wants you to not look at the feast days because they're so Jewish. Miss the blessings on those days. They're all appointments with the Father, the King of the universe. And you can't help but being blessed when you surrender to him and meet with him on those feast days and substitute these other, these pagan holidays. Just like Jeroboam when the two tribes of Israel were down in Jerusalem and ten tribes went up north. The two tribes down in Jerusalem were celebrating the Father's feast days. And so Jeroboam made his own feast day to keep the people from going down to Jerusalem on the 15th day of the 8th month. It's important. And don't bring any beer, wine, and alcohol in your house. Don't put it in your body because you bring demons into your body, into your house. You want to keep your house free from Satan. You want shalom peace to be in your house. If you don't do these things, he's sitting right next to you at the dinner table, sitting with you on the couch watching TV. He's with you. He has the legal right to be there because you're doing things that are against the word. It's important you realize that. It doesn't matter if the majority doesn't agree with what I say. It really doesn't matter to me because Yeshua is always in the minority. The road to hell is wide and many are found on it. The road to heaven is straight and narrow and few are found on it. The choice is up to you. Trace what I'm saying back to the word. Now you mentioned to some people and they say, I don't agree with that. All they're going to do is put tradition. They're not going to show you the word where I'm wrong. What the Father speaks to me is line upon line, precept upon precept. But the choice is up to you. I really don't want anybody listening out there to, to miss the rapture. It's so very important. You don't want to go through the seven-year tribulation period. And it could come as soon as the Feast of Trumpets on September 25th. So again, Yeshua went into the synagogue on the Sabbath in Nazareth, where he grew up. And he stood up to read. Now, you have to imagine that Mary had to be there. Joseph had to be there. All his relatives had to be there. And he got up to speak. Verse 18, The Spirit of Yahweh is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering the sight to the blind, and set a living them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of Yahweh. Then he closed the book, and everybody was looking at him. Verse 21, And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. He had to be in the right place. The Father wanted him to be there. He had to return to his hometown where he grew up. Just like he had to be in the temple when he was 12 years old, ministering to those people in the temple on the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He had to be there. They loved him, what he read in everything. In verse 24, then he continued to speak. They said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. <laughs> He's saying, hey, this salvation is not only for you, it's for the Gentiles, for everybody. He, and he said, remember in the days of Elijah, when he was sent to a widow lady. There were many widows in Israel, but he was sent to Zidon, a non-Israelite, a woman there that was, was a widow. And not only that, there were many lepers in Israel, but the father used Elisha to clean Naaman, who was a Syrian, not an Israelite. Well, they were really angry at that time. But the father wanted him to say that. He positioned him in this situation, in this place, in the synagogue on the Sabbath, in his hometown, again, where he grew up. In verse 28, And all day in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. All, everybody. You know, Mary and Joseph had to be there. His relatives had to be there. But they all were filled with wrath. And he rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him unto the brow of the hill whereon the, the city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he passing through the midst of them went his way. They couldn't touch him. He was walking in love. Love never fails. They couldn't push him off the hill. But then he had to be positioned. In verse 31, he came to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and he taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. So it's important you see how 
The Father positions Yeshua in the right place at the right time. He wants to do the same thing with us. Again, He wants to position us to not only use us, but to bless us. You're praying for financial miracles. Oh, son, you obey the Father and go see somebody. And you pray for them, and you're ready to leave. And they say, hey, I want to bless you. It's important that you surrender to Him on a daily basis. Not only does He want to do a spiritual operation on us every day, to take junk out of our lives spiritually, but he wants to use us and bless us, sometimes at the same time. So again, we talk about being in the right place at the right time, allowing the Father to position us. Sometimes maybe where we don't want to be. That maybe that's not our first choice. Like Paul is ready to go someplace else. I think it's by Letus. Then he had a vision. The person said, come over to Macedonia and help us. So his plan A became plan B, going to Macedonia, became his plan A because Father repositioned him. So again, look at these four feasts. Be very watchful. The Father's going to do something really powerful. And make sure you're a part of it. Make sure you're with him, abiding with him. He could come back on the Feast of Trumpets. But it's going to be a new beginning period. We talked about Tishri 1. It's not the beginning of the year according to the word. Nisan 1 the beginning of the year, as we talked about. But it's still a time of a new beginning. So let's go to Father in prayer right now. Just put your hand on the computer on your cell phone. First of all, we want to pray for the, the unborn children. Father, we ask you to touch the unborn babies in the womb. Protect them, Father. Bring them to a full birth. Talk to their parents to help them to make sure their baby is brought to a full birth. We thank you, Father. I ask you to put your blood over every unborn baby in the womb. And we thank you, Father. We praise you. Now, if you out there don't know that you know that you're saved. Just say after me, say, Father, I believe Yeshua died for me. I turn my flesh over to you. I surrender my life to you. Come into my spirit. Fill me with your spirit to overflowing so I can help others. Make me more like Yeshua. Bring the fruit of the spirit out of my life. I thank you, Father. There's no greater miracle than salvation, but he wants to do individual miracles in your life. After you have received salvation, and I surrendered to him. So just believe with me. Any growths, any tumors, any diseases that are represented out there, I curse you. I command you, growths, tumors, diseases, I command you all to die right now. Disappear and not return. In the name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. Father, touch people from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. Touch, touch hearts, Father, physically. Let every artery be open, every valve open. Oh, touch people, Father. I decree restoration physically, spiritually, mentally, financially, and in any area of their lives that you want to restore, Father. And I thank you. We receive those blessings right now, Father. And always position us to always be in the right place at the right time. And we give you all the praise and the honor, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. If you enjoy these podcasts, tell other people about these podcasts. And remember the next time, this is Evangelist Henry Walker saying, Greater is the Father in you, your daddy, the king of the universe, than he is in the world.